It's summertime, school's out, sun's shining, and you just want to stay indoors playing games on your PC for fun. Well, how can you have fun in a game that's playing at a low FPS? What's my fellow prodigies? Prodigy here with the coming J, and today I'm showing sure you guys the ultimate guide to increasing the FPS for all PC games, which this guide will be working for the years to come and help out those of you who might have a lower end PC. Now, if you're new to the channel, subscribe to notifications because I do like to upload quality videos I'm into enjoy, and go follow me on Twitter because I am really active on there. And guys, let's see if we get 70 likes in today's video because I do appreciate it, but without further ado, let's get into the video. And just for a heads up, I highly recommend that you follow all these steps and watch the video till the end for the best PC performance. Now, for tip number one, you want to set up your system performance. Now this is going to be a very long tip, but I'm going to try my best to make this fast and simple. We're going to have to delete some temporary files and change some settings on the PC. So first off, you want to delete your temporary files, which you can do this by typing in run on the search bar and typing in percent temp percent. And once you open up that folder, you just want to hit control A to select all the files and then hit delete. Now trust me, this will not do any harm to your PC as it's only deleting the temporary files made on your computer, which are slowing it down. And just a quick side note, if you get a window saying that the folder is in use, just like this to do this for all current items and hit skip. And you will also want to repeat all the last steps again with typing in run, but this time type prefetch and do the same steps. Next up, you want to do a disk cleanup for all your current drives, which you can do this by right clicking on a drive and going into its properties. And once you delete all the temporary files on both drives, you can get started on optimizing your drives. Now to make this very simple, all you have to do is click on each and every drive and click optimize, which this will basically make your drives run more smoothly. And to make things easier, instead of doing the step every here and there, I would recommend doing a setup scheduled optimization for your drives and have it set to a weekly schedule like me. And setting it to daily is too much while setting it to monthly will be too long of a wait. Now near the end of tip number one, you want to type services into the search bar, let it open up, and then scroll until you find a service called super fetch and you want to disable it. Now the description may say that it improves system performance but actually it creates a lot of temporary files on the computer like we deleted earlier so make sure to disable it and finally you want to type task manager into the search bar, go to the startup tab and you want to disable programs that have the highest startup impact which by doing this this will help your PC start up faster. Now moving on to tip number two, lowering the visual quality in game. It is going to mean lowering the shadow quality, lowering ATA aliasing, textures and more. Now you guys need to understand that you can't always run everything on super high settings otherwise you're going to experience a lot of frame drops in game unless you have a high-end PC. So what I recommend doing is if your game has an auto detect feature in the settings I would recommend using it and it will have the settings that will be working best for your system. Now in the case that you get over 60 FPS in the game of your choosing and you find your game to look a bit potatoey, I would recommend slowly increasing some of the graphics settings until you find that perfect middle ground for your graphics and your FPS. And a good way to figure out what settings are impacting your game the most is to change that specific setting and use the game's benchmark to see what FPS you get. For example, I use a combination of low to high settings for my division game and I'm able to get a decent frame rate from my benchmark. Now if you're experiencing screen tearing in your gameplay but you normally get over 60 FPS in a game, then I would recommend turning on VSync and capping it off at 60 FPS as it does reduce screen tearing. But I will have to mention that if your PC gets a frame rate lower than 60 FPS without VSync, then most likely you're not going to see much improvement for your game. But in the end, if you reduce the video quality or something, try taking it with a grain of salt because would you rather play in super high settings with 5 FPS or play on medium custom settings for 60 FPS. Next up for tip number 3, overclocking, which if you guys don't know what overclocking is, it's basically to increase the performance of your graphics card or your CPU, which in my opinion, if you're not overclocking your GPU or your CPU, then you're not really taking the full potential of your PC parts. Now this isn't something I recommend everyone to do unless you know what you're doing and understand that if you're stupid about it, you could risk breaking your graphics card or your CPU. Now I'm not saying that you should be scared of overclocking your stuff because it really does help increase the performance again in games so what I would recommend doing is going on YouTube and looking up how to overclock your GPU or your CPU but lucky enough I will leave two links in the description on how to easily overclock your GPU and how to overclock your AMD CPU. Now I was not able to find an easy overclock guide on how to overclock an Intel CPU as you would have to go into the BIOS of your computer which I know for most people would not feel too comfortable doing that but it won't be a big deal because overclocking the GPU will be good enough. Moving on to tip number four benchmark performance and this basically means that you 
you download a benchmark software to test out the performance of your computer, which a benchmark software that I would recommend downloading would be the Valley Benchmark. Now there are other benchmark softwares out there which I will leave some links down below for you guys to test out. And using a benchmark software is pretty useful when you want to see how much of a performance gain you got from overclocking, as you would first benchmark your PC without any overclocking and then benchmark your PC once it's overclocked. Moving on to tip number 5, having an FPS counter. Now this can be very useful to most people as it allows you to monitor how well your game is performing at certain given times. And you can easily get an FPS counter by going to the Steam settings and turning the option on. But if you're playing a non-Steam game and you still want an FPS counter, you can easily get a different software like Shadowplay or Fraps as they both allow the option of an in-game FPS counter. Next up for tip number 6, updating your drivers. And this is actually something most people overlook because if you're running your PC with outdated drivers, then you're not getting the full performance that you want. And the most important drivers that you always want to keep up to date are your GPU and CPU drivers, which if you want to make sure that you're running the latest drivers or your graphics card, all you want to do is go to the NVIDIA website to get the drivers for an NVIDIA card, or go to the AMD website if you have an AMD graphics card or an AMD CPU, which both websites do include their own downloadable softwares that will auto detect when there's a new driver available. And if you have an Intel CPU, you need to go to the Intel's website and look up the driver that you need. But if you want to go the easy route of things, I would recommend downloading the software called Driver Booster, which it basically updates all your drivers with a push of a button, which is pretty cool if you think about it. So I will leave a link down below to the software for you guys to download, and I will leave a link down below to a tutorial on how to use the software. Next up for tip number 7, disable CPU core parking. And basically what this means is that there are some CPUs that have locked cores inside that are not in use, but if you disable the parking of those cores, then you'll be able to get a high performance with your CPU. And the way you can do this is by going to the link in the description, that will lead you to the Coderbacks website. And once you're on here, just click on the download link and bring it onto your desktop and download it. And once you open up the folder, just click on the executable file, and once it opens up, you should be able to see if you have any cores parked on your CPU. Now, not everyone is going to have parked cores on their CPU. For example, like me, I didn't have any cores parked for my CPU, but I will say that if you have an Intel CPU, you are most likely to have a few cores locked. So make sure you try this program out to see if you have any parked cores. Now for tip number 8, UCC Cleaner. And this is actually really beneficial to those of you that don't normally clean out their PC of junk files, which over time can stack up and cause your PC to not run at full performance. And this program is really easy to use, as all you have to do is analyze all the locations on your PC and then run the cleaner, which will take about a few minutes or more depending on how much junk is on your PC. But that's pretty much it with the software, as it's pretty simple to use and doesn't really require any experience to use. Now for tip number 9, download GeForce Experience. And this will only pertain to those of you that have an Nvidia card, not an AMD card. Now if you don't know what GeForce Experience is, it's basically a software for Nvidia cards for you to get the up to date drivers for your GPU, record any PC gameplay for free, and best of all, give you optimized settings for certain games. Which out of all the other features of this program, the optimized game settings is one of the best features as it does give you the recommended settings for certain games for your PC, which will be very beneficial to those of you that have no clue on which settings may be hindering your gaming performance. And the link for the program would be in the description down below. And finally, for tip number 10, download Razer Core 10. Text. Like seriously, this is actually one of the best softwares to get for your PC and the only thing you gotta focus on is the game booster tab in the application. And then the game booster tab, all you wanna do is click on all the green boxes under tweak, boost, and a defrag section. And once you let each process finish, you can just restart your PC and you'll be all good to go. And that my friends, is the ultimate guide to increasing the FPS for all your PC games. And I made sure to research all these things beforehand and test out if they actually increase my FPS in certain games, which it definitely did on my part. And I hope you guys to follow these steps so you guys can get better performance in games. But in the end, if you're still getting low frames where most of the games you have, despite you following all my tips, then worst case scenario, it's probably time to go and upgrade your hardware, whether it be upgrading your RAM, your CPU, your GPU, or just all of the above. Because at some point, you will have to upgrade some hardware to play the new and upcoming games. But I think that's going to wrap it up, and I hope you guys enjoyed the video, but if you guys can, drop a like, I do appreciate the support, go follow me on Twitter, cause I do like to tweet out daily, also if you guys can, Comment down below which tip will help you out the most and tell me how much of a performance gain you got because I want to hear you guys have to say because I do responding to everyone's comments and also if you're new to the channel be sure to go subscribe to the notifications because I do like to upload quality videos for you to enjoy but anyways thanks for watching and let's get 70 likes in today's video. Now subscribe for more quality content in the future and like always stay classy.